my name's Linda um, Kirby, Councillor Linda Kirby. Um, have we any apologies for absence? I think we're all present and correct, aren't we, tonight? So no apologies. Declarations of pecuniary interests, anybody? No. Nope. Okay, and the minutes uh, of the previous... Sorry, Councillor Crow has not a declaration to make. Councillor yes, Councillor Crow. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. It's not a pecuniary interest as such. However, regarding uh, the application for 2 Westcombe Avenue, um, it is adjacent to number 4 Westcombe Avenue, uh, which is the home of a personal friend of mine. And uh, for that, this reason, I will be recusing myself for consideration of that item. Thank you. Uh, Councillor David Dean is in a similar position to myself, and he will also be recusing himself for consideration of uh, 2 Westcombe Avenue. Okay, thank you. And when it comes to that point, if you would switch your video and your mic off, but you can still listen in. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, the minutes of the previous meeting, can we agree they're a correct record? Yeah. Councillor Southgate. If I may, um, on page one, mm -hmm. Councillor De de declared a, Dean declared a personal interest in item five. He actually declared a personal interest in item six. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's a correction. Any other issues? Can we agree those as a correct record, please? Agreed. Thank you very much. Um, we now move um, the items on the agenda. I think we will take in the order they are. Um, so we're beginning with agenda item five, which is the former Mitcham Fire Station at 30 Lower Green West. Um, we have one speaker. Um, so I'm, I'll pass to uh, Jonathan Lewis to introduce this report, please. Thank you, Chair. Right. Sorry, you can't see the screen, can you? You can. Yeah, you can see the screen? I can. Yes, can see the screen. Okay. Um, the uh, application um, was um, brought before committee um, in uh, March um, this year. Um, if I can just drag the cursor down. You'll recall that there were hoardings erected without the benefit of planning permission um, in front of the, um, uh, the old fire station. Um, members deferred taking a decision at that time in order for improvements to be made to the appearance um, of um, uh, the hoardings. Um, and uh, images of the fire station um, when it was in operation, a black and white photograph, which you can see in the center of the image here and then images of the fire station as existing and with um, computer generated images or at least a computer generated image showing uh, the proposals um, which are currently the subject of uh, a planning application uh, have also been uh, applied. Um, since consideration of uh, the application in uh, March, um, the new application which has been submitted to uh, remodel and extend the existing fire station um, has been the subject of negotiation. Um, and although the application hasn't been determined as yet, officers would describe those uh, discussions um, as constructive uh, and positive. Were permission to be granted for the scheme, which is currently under consideration, um, then the hoardings uh, could remain by reason of permitted development rights. However, in the meantime, uh, they remain unauthorized, uh, but nevertheless uh, make the site secure and following these changes uh, appear less utilitarian um, and permission is uh, recommended for approval subject to a limited um, period. Thank you. Thank you. Can we return to full screen, please? Thank you very much. Um, I have Mary Butler wishing to speak. Uh, Mary, are you present? Hi, yes. Yes, so you have three minutes, please. Hi. Hi, I'm Mary Butler, a trustee of Mitcham Cricket Green Community and Heritage, the Civic Society for this part of Mitcham. 
It's disappointing that we have to spend more time debating the merits of the unauthorised hoardings erected around the old fire station. And uh, thanks go to Councillor Welton for calling in this application so you can make that decision. As a committee, you have been unwavering in your support for higher standards of development in Lower Green West, which respect the conservation area. The issues raised by these hoardings remain simple and clear cut. They still enclose an excessive area and they already cause serious harm to conservation area views and locally listed buildings. To this, we can now add that they carry unauthorised and intrusive advertising. Any hoardings need only be erected around the perimeter of the building in order to protect the former fire station. They do not need to enclose an additional area of land as large again as the fire station, land that isn't even owned by the applicant. The apron in front of the fire station has been left open for years without issue. We already know the hoardings will be visually damaging to the conservation area because they have been in place without permission for months. The character of Lower Green West is defined by the variety of views through and across it. These are now significantly obstructed. The hoarding also damages the unclutter uncluttered setting of the nationally listed war memorial and causes harm to the locally listed fire station and vestry hall by limiting views and eroding their context. When you last considered the plans, you told the applicant to go away and come back with an improved design. Instead, they have added advertising panels which promote their own development more than tell the story of the site. The applicant's track record has been to willfully ignore planning controls by erecting existing hoardings without seeking planning permission and on land not in their ownership. Now they are taking Merton Council for fools by using them to promote their own planning application. This behaviour should be dealt with directly. Planning permission should be refused and the hoardings removed. One minute left. They harm the conservation area and they are in conflict with development plan policies CS14, DMD1, DMD2 and DMD4. If planning permission is later given to develop the site, then it should include details of new hoardings and they should be located around the perimeter of the building. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no further uh, people wishing to speak. Um, uh, Jonathan, do you wish to comment on that? Uh, Chair, just, just briefly, um, the enclosure of space um, at paragraph 7.4 in the officer's report, um, you'll see that um, uh, we've noted Mitchum has historically suffered from squatters and traveller sites utilising vacant sites and buildings um, and um, officers um, fairly and honestly um, consider that the enclosure um, of this um, forecourt um, uh, provides a, a robust um, means by which um, hopefully that that could be um, prevented. Um, if I can also direct um, members to paragraph 7.8 um, of uh, the report, um, officers confirmed um, uh, that the council's estate manager had raised no objection to um, the forecourt of the building um, uh, being uh, uh, enclosed. Um, the issue of the war memorial um, wasn't um, uh, a reason for deferring, uh, making a decision um, last time. And in the report, um, it's noted that it was considered that the war memorial was sufficiently remote from uh, the site, such that the hoardings um, wouldn't um, have a harmful um, impact. Um, and uh, again, uh, whilst we could um, uh, uh, examine the um, uh, planning um, controls with regards to whether or not these images now constitute unauthorised um, advertising um, panels, um, I think that the, the fairly um, light touch approach that the applicant has, has taken, which um, I acknowledge um, does seek to um, provide some um, imagery of a scheme that they're working um, on um, is perhaps a, a, a suitable balance in this particular instance and that we should move on and make a decision. Thank you. Thank you. Do you uh, have any questions, please? Uh, Councillor Crow. Thank you, Chair. I would just like to clarify where exactly these hoardings are going to be 
because we have photographs which show hoardings which have obviously been improved. But the plan where on page 19 with the red boundary is enclosing what appears to be a much bigger area. So my question really is, are the photographs misleading in the sense that they are not the hoardings that are going to remain, it is bigger hoardings enclosing a, a bigger area that's been put up? Uh, Chair and Councillor Crow, um, my apologies that the um, small site location plan, uh, the boundary of which is drawn on um, by um, uh, the planning uh, team to identify um, the site, um, is not the basis um, on which this application has been submitted. The application has been submitted simply re to retain the hoardings which you saw in the photographs. Um, if I can um, ask you to have a look at um, page 21 of the committee papers, um, you'll see there um, a, um, uh, uh, a black line um, enclosing an irregular shape approximating to a rectangle in front of the existing fire station building. And that um, provides the outline of where the hoardings are that you saw in the photographs earlier. It is, it is those hoardings which the applicant is seeking to retain, nothing different. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Um, so what is the role of hoardings? When I spoke to uh, Neil Milligan about hoardings in the past, there's no planning requirement for hoardings. Uh, I understand uh, what Jonathan is saying, although locally um, somebody turned up with a crane and removed a 2,600 pound piece of cement. Um, so these hoardings are not going to stop anybody. But um, I'm assuming that hoardings are there to build the building. But um, why would somebody have such a large area for the building? In the pre-application conversations, is the developer saying to the council, we're going to need this space uh, to build the building, and therefore we've put the hoardings where we need them? Um, so there are slightly different questions there. Um, why do they have hoardings? And why do they need hoardings this size? What's the logic behind it? Um, Chair, um, I think in, in terms of where the hoardings go exactly, um, there is, given the depth of the forecourt to the old fire station, um, scope for um, considerable flexibility. Um, uh, the hoardings could be drawn um, close um, to the building. Um, the drawings, the hoardings could be drawn uh, closer to um, uh, to the highway. Um, in this particular um, uh, instance, the hoardings have enclosed a um, generous area uh, of space without um, impeding on um, sight lines of um, of any vehicles or uh, pedestrians using um, uh, the surrounding um, footpaths um, and highways. Um, while at the same time enclosing an area which, um, as I've noted in, in the report, um, could be a hostage to fortune in terms of um, providing a, a space where um, fly tipping could take place. Um, I acknowledge what Councillor Dean says that um, where there is a will to um, remove um, means of enclosure um, like this, then the very determined um, fly tipper um, will um, will find a way uh, around it. Um, but I, I think, it, again, uh, a balance has to be struck um, in, in a case like this so that we have um, uh, hoardings that make the site secure for those that are perhaps just the opportunist um, uh, tippers. Um, given that there are um, uh, um, uh, railed gates um, in front um, of the site, which show, which enable you to view the front of the old fire station, um, it would be immediately apparent if somebody was to um, simply um, fly tip uh, uh, the site that um, action could be taken by um, uh, the council to uh, uh, tackle um, that. So I think there, there, there are a number of very, um, very simple sort of design considerations at, at play um, here. And it's not actually based on any 
um, uh, methodical assessment of exactly how much space you need um, in order to make the site secure. All, all I would say, ha having seen some photographs recently of a site uh, for the old um, Wimbledon Carriage Company um, on Bushy Road, um, uh, that's uh, a, a, a site which only recently has been the subject um, of um, uh, fly tipping. Um, I, I think both Neil Milligan and Tim Bryson um, and I have all seen um, images um, of that. And given that this is in a, a conservation area, uh, I think it really is um, important that, that some um, reasonable but proportionate measures are taken to um, secure this forecourt. Are there any other questions, Councillor Dean? You're, you're muted, Councillor Dean, you have to unmute. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Linda. I thought you'd let me carry on being muted. Um, the, um, looking through the documents, I don't see that argument. Uh, and I don't see why, if they're having hoardings, they can't be on their own land. And I'd just like to refer you to all the fly tipping stuff I deal with as a councillor and every single council on this committee. Any fly tipper will smash those doors down in about five seconds. So um, I, I, the documents don't actually have that as an argument. That's all, I'm, which is more of a statement, Chair, and I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Uh, we okay. don't need to answer that. Okay. Um, are there any further questions? And do we have any comments, please? Apart from the one that's just been made. <laughs> councillor Dean. So the hoardings should be on the land of the developer. I can't see any reason why they wouldn't, and I can't see why the council officers can't accept that. Okay, any further comments? Councillor Southgate, can you unmute? Um, yes, I, I mean, we went over the attitude of the uh, our estates management and their seemingly relaxed stance on this, which is surprising. Um, but, but given that, I think the, uh, the applicant has done what we might reasonably expect and, and no more. So it is, it is pragmatic rather than aesthetic. Be nice to have more, more pictures of old fire engines. I love those and not the uh, anonymous looking um, car in the other uh, picture there. But um, it, it could have been done a lot better, but I suspect that that would not be reasonable grounds to refuse what, what we now see. Okay. If there are no further, oh, Councillor, um, Councillor Henry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't see any problem with it at the moment because it's only for one year and um, it's not going to be there forever. It's only for a temporary um, period of time. And, um, you know, I, I don't think, you know, just cause any problems to anyone really. So, okay. yeah, I just want to agree in it. Okay, let's, uh, if there are no further comments then let's move to the vote. Can I see those in favor, please show. That's eight councillor. And those against. That's a one councillor. Okay, are you verifying um, votes um, by going through the names again, Louise? Councillor, I, th I think that was that was nine four. If, if members could raise their hands again. Okay. Yeah, that's nine four. And those against, sorry. Thank you. So the recommendation is carried. Uh, we no, just come here. Useful 
Evening, everyone. I think um, we have a little situation. I think Councillor Kirby's frozen on the screen. Oh, she's back again, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry about this. I don't know why this is happening, but anyway, yes, I'm back. Sorry. Um, Count, uh, could Tim Bryson please introduce the report? Thank you, Chair. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, the application site is on the corner of Ridgeway and Hillside in Wimbledon Village. Uh, the site is adjacent to the Swan Public House and um, residential properties in the, in the surroundings. Uh, the site currently comprises the Ridgeway Stables, uh, which is single storey structures here, a two storey barn at the back and a small retail unit at the front. The proposal itself is to part demolition of the stables, um, replaced with new stables, um, with a um, office building with a new retail unit at the front a small extension to the barn buildings at the back to create um, replacement caretakers accommodation and the refurbishment of the barn at the back as well. So talk you through the floor plan. So existing plans are at the top and proposed below. So looking at the ground floor at the front, replacement retail unit at the front, um, some office space at ground floor here and then replacement stables um, looking at the existing, off the existing stable yard and access facility here. Um, going to first floor, the caretaker's accommodation to be replaced and upgraded here. Um, again, office space proposed in these parts of the building with a front roof terrace looking over the ridgeway. And then the second floor level, um, the remaining office space here. Looking at the design of the proposal, um, it is to be a slate hipped roof um, building. So looking at the existing at the top proposed again below from Ridgeway itself, that's the pub to the left. The height of the building would match the pub house to the left. Uh, at the back internally, the barn building, as we've called it, is to be refurbished um, and upgraded to provide um, new stable facilities and also the extension up top floor to replace the existing caretakers accommodation. Looking at the rear of the development, again, this the view internally at ground floor level, but at top floor, you would see this pop up here. Uh, and then from hillside to the, to the west, there is a large um, original wall um, with gable here. Um, so what is proposed is to provide some new access, pedestrian access in um, for the office entrance and one window to serve the ground floor office. The existing access to the to the stable yard would would remain and, and, and upgraded. So the views from this, um, you can just see in the background the roof of the public house. Uh, it is slightly lower. The proposal stepped as you go to the front. So going towards Ridgeway, so the taller element is set back. So from Ridgeway itself, uh, it's the existing shop facility here. It used to form part of the of the stable yard, um, but now it is in occupation with a um, a tile as a tile shop. Uh, so that would be replaced and upgraded with um, arched windows and making it bigger. The parapet wall would be designed to match the existing one here. And then internally, what the, to the public house would essentially be these elevations here in the wall. So looking at site photographs, uh, so the office um, building would be up up here, um, set just just slightly back from the wall itself. Um, as discussed, uh, window punch through, and a pedestrian facilities through here. This is the barn building at the back, which would be refurbished. Um, that's the public house to the left, a view from Ridgeway. So as I said earlier, the height would match that, the tallest part of the building. So there's the site here. So as discussed, that parapet would, would match here with the new shop facility and the office building set behind. And from here, again, so looking at re obviously retaining this, the uh, original wall, uh, but building set, set behind it. 
Um, overall chair, officers consider this to be a, a good use of of um, of space within within Wimbledon Village. Um, it provides small um, but good office accommodation and also replacement um, stable facility to the rear. So overall, officers recommend permission be granted subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions, please? Um, Councillor Dean. I was just a bit unsure about horses. So um, what's the current status? Are there no horses at the stables? And um, is there a viable, if there isn't any, um, the talk of stables, I assume, mean horses. And is there a, a, a viability that horses can come back based on the application? Um, Chair, as far as um, I'm aware, there are horse, the horses facility is, is still there. Uh, as a stable yard so they run it um so that um families can can go on um, um trips out with, with with the horses um uh in terms of the the viability we haven't had any uh viability put forward in terms of the um the sort of size of the of the stable facility put forward um but what i can show you chair if i can quickly share my screen is the uh, looking at the existing and proposed ground floor plan, so a lot of the a lot of the stables are are various sizes. So we do have a a, a number of stables, um, but you'll see uh, some are very are very thin here, um, somewhat in in eradicate in in, in shape. Um, so although the proposal would provide slightly less stables themselves, um, they would be brand new stable facilities, including the ones on this side for refurbishment and up here. Um, so no, we don't we don't have um, viability put forward to say that this this would 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 be viable as a as a, as a stable facility per se, but. Um, but this is the application before us, and this is this is clear on the plan what they're what they're proposing. So, um, in any any um, any assessment to to change that would have to be judged on its merits when it when it comes forward in in the future. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any further questions, Councillor Henry? Um, Thank you. Um, is it possible for you to show us on the plan where um, the storage <coughs> for the manure will be, please? Yep. Um. So they have storage facility um, is, is indicated to be here at the front of the site. Uh, they also have uh, on the plan, so they got office, back office here, classroom um, for holding their, holding their classes, uh, and a small office here. But the, on the plan, the storage facility is to be here at the, at the front. Thank you, Councillor Making. Councillor Making, can you unmute? Thank you. Yes, I've just unmuted. Um, can you tell, is there demand for office space in Wimbledon? And, uh, or is it all the space that's been mooted for offices being used by the stables? Uh, so the, the scheme before you is for B1, um, is for office space. Um, the office space would be separate from the stable facility itself. Um, in terms of demand for, for office space in, in Wimbledon per se, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we there, there will always be uh, some demand for, for office space. It's a it's a use that's acceptable in, in principle in this location, albeit for small scale development. So um, we wouldn't be looking for large amounts of office space in this particular location, given it's outside the town centre and business district. But the local plan does allow for for small scale office development, which this would be. Um, so. In terms of demand, it is an acceptable, in principle, use. Um, so they don't they don't have to demonstrate demand with with this application. Thank you. Any further questions, Councillor Crow? Thank you, Chair. 
Um, I see on page uh, 29 of the report, the Wimbledon Society suggests that the um, artificial slate which should be replaced with natural slate. I'm not quite sure whether we've conditioned that. Uh, if we haven't conditioned that, I was wondering whether it was reasonable for us to make that a condition. Uh, yes, Chair, so we've, we have noted that in the application in discussions with the applicant, they are proposing natural slates and we've conditioned it uh, for samples of materials to be put forward uh, under the material samples condition. Councillor McGarth, did you put your hand up? Apologies, I scratched my head. <laughs> okay, Councillor Dean. <laughs> I'm not scratching my head. Um, or oh, I am scratching my head, but metaphorically, not physically. Um, the, um, so I, I read on page 35.4 that uh, the whole site is being locally listed. I'm assuming that's got nothing to do with the planning application or is that a part of the application? So if it is being listed separately, when will that happen? And what protection does it give when it's locally listed? Uh, yep, so the the site is has been put forward by um, uh, recommended, recommended to be lo locally listed. Um, and from discussions with our conservation officer, that is due for a council decision um, later this year, I can't confirm that as, as definitely going ahead as a, as, a, as a meeting, but that was that was what we've been told in terms of um, for that to be formally adopted. Um, in discussions with the conservation officer, the the existing single storey stables towards as you go towards the front of the site, it's a it's got a corrugated roof, um, so that's not the most significant historic part that that we're looking to to protect here. So the main part to protect um, is the barn building at the rear. Um, you'll see from my pictures that that um, decorative gable feature at front's hillside and the wall itself. So the the um, should the local listing go ahead, that would still that would still capture the whole the whole site. Um, so and that would help. It would help its long term protection. So um, particularly like by the scheme, it does involve refurbishment of the rear barn building. And I'm sorry, just one more thing on that. So specifically, the conservation officer talked about the two fireplaces. So do we need to have a condition to say that's part of the protection or is that just taken as read? Um, the fireplace, I mean, they, we have put a condition on, so we've got, in a lot of the conservation officer's comments, um, we have put a condition on number 11, which is for access for recording um historic um historic features within within the rear barn um building so we do have a condition there which would be worded in the way as such that the the conservation officer does visit does visit that the site um before um before the pro proposed works commence in terms of looking at historic features to retain um so although uh lo locally listed is not fully fully protective of internal features to a building um, compared to statutory listed grade two, for example, um, but what we can do here is is put the condition on so that that, that can hopefully be um, be protected. Any further questions? Any comments? Okay, then can we move to the vote, please? Those in favour of the recommendation, can you please show? I think that's unanimous. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you, the recommendation is agreed. We move to agenda item seven, which is uh, to West Coombe Avenue, West Wimbledon. Uh, can I ask um, uh, Jonathan Lewis, please, to uh, re uh, present the report. Sorry, Chair. Um, Chair, members, um, this application um, proposes various extensions to a detached uh, interwar uh, house uh, in West Wimbledon, lying just outside the Westcombe Avenue um, conservation area. 
Um, and I'll just show you, we've got some quite, quite bold. Well, here, here we have the, the, the elevations showing uh, the, uh, the proposals. Um, so we've got um, the building as existing, and then just up here we've got the the building as as proposed. The proposals are for a two-story side extension, part single, part two-story rear extension, front porch, uh, rear roof extension. Uh, and if members um, look at um, section three of the officer's report, a more detailed uh, description of the proposals can be found there. Uh, the application has been the subject of some amendments, and these are detailed at paragraph um, 3.7. Uh, the application has been the subject of a number of objections relating to the scale and bulk um, of the extensions. You'll see that, as I said, this is the building as existing. This is the building uh, as proposed. So roughly where the arrow is moving on the screen, that's that's the line of the, uh, uh, of the existing roof. And then just cutting down here alongside the uh, this proposed secondary bay which is being added. Um, so the objections relate to the scale and bulk of the extensions, um, overlooking, loss of privacy, impact on the conservation area and impact on the character of the host building. Um, the officer's report considers um, materials which have been subject to uh, some amendment which if permission is granted can be the subject um, of condition and we can require that samples are provided. If I just take you down to the, um, the CGI images. Um, so we can ask for samples if members are minded to um, uh, support um, the, the proposals. Um, the report considers uh, the bulk um, and uh, massing um, of the various elements of the proposals and officers have exercised their judgment in concluding that the scheme is acceptable. Uh, the roof extensions would generally be hidden away from uh, street view. If I can just take you back to the, the roof uh, additions, uh, quite bold, uh, but again, um, tucked uh, around the, the rear of the, um, uh, the building. Um, impact on neighbouring properties has also, uh, been prop has also been properly assessed, uh, examining overall visual impact along with privacy and overlooking and where necessary conditions can be attached so as to mitigate any potential impact of overlooking or loss of privacy. And you'll see from the, the report that officers have said, notwithstanding the somewhat modern approach to the detailed design, Overall, officers consider the proposals to be acceptable and warrant support, and the scheme is recommended for approval uh, subject uh, to conditions. And if I can just, sorry, they're a little bit out of sequence. So we have a photograph of the, um, the existing dwelling um, here. So you can see where that car is parked in the image. That would be roughly there um, on this um, image with the extension uh, lapping over to the side. Then if we just go down a little bit further, we've got um, some other, that's the uh, building again. That's looking um, towards the A3, um, uh, just around the corner from, uh, uh, sorry, just next to the site. So again, um, a similar 1930s property being given very much uh, uh, a makeover. So again, just to get your orientation, um, where the, um, uh, the softer pale green tree is on the right side of the image, that's looking in the direction of the A3. And this image here, again, you can see that dark vehicle park, that's parked outside of the, uh, the application property. And you can see here an, another um, building, which, or another dwelling, which has been um, extended quite, um, quite significantly. Again, this shows the, um, uh, the back of the site, the garage, um, uh, which you can see in the image, uh, relates to uh, the building in the center um, of uh, this image with our application site over here. Again, that's looking into the site of the adjoining property. 
and the application property that's the flank wall of the uh, the application property so that wall would come closer to this uh, uh, this um, site boundary um, uh, but again you know you can see there's there's an outbuilding in that person's um, garden and some diversity locally with a with a new property that's been uh, erected um, in the street uh, and these images show the properties that make up uh, those um, in uh, the conservation area um, it may seem a little curious that this property isn't in the Westcombe Avenue um, conservation uh, area given that it appears to have been built by the same um, house builder in the 1930s um, but nevertheless we can't go um, bending um, uh, the rules um, now. The long and short of it is this building is not in the conservation area, the others um, are, and it would be rather um, harsh um, for officers um, to be overly prescriptive in terms of how the applicant wishes to, um, to approach uh, the elevations. And like I said, I think what they've tried to do is pick up um, on some of the um, more um, general use of materials, so tile hanging combined with um, white render. Um, but as we've said, in, in order to ensure that we get a good quality of finish, um, we can go beyond simply saying materials um, to match because they won't exactly match, and we can ask for um, samples to, to be provided. So like I said, the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bush wishes to speak. Are you present? Can... I am, Chair. Thank you, Chair, okay. and thank you to um, esteemed colleagues. Um, so, um, essentially, two points um, that Jonathan has just raised. Um, A, the house that's um, adjacent to it um, is not facing in the A3, it's facing onto Coombe Lane. Um, and the entry onto that house is from Coombe Lane, not from Westcombe Avenue. Um, and the property opposite, um, which you commented as being a new build, is not a new build. Um, it's been there for since uh, probably I'd say 50 odd years or something. Um, but that house is also not part of the conservation area. That's why it's um, so that is number one, um, Westcombe Avenue. Um, that's obviously has an extension done. So coming on to um, this extension, so my um, main comments um, and objection is just around the overdevelopment of the property. I appreciate that it's not in the conservation area, even though um, there's a perception that it is uh, based upon the Tudor-like house, um, um, which makes up West Kim Avenue. But the fact is the extension will um, lead within sort of a meter or short of a meter from the boundary wall of number four West Kim Avenue, which you saw previously, which was that garage. Um, the sort of um, two story or well, three story high extension would be overlooking into their garden and also number six, West Kim Avenue um, and we feel with the glass windows overlooking into everything it's just going to sort of provide um, a very monstrous um, development um, and obviously that's based upon is the number of dormers we've got sort of one minute left of dormer windows there we've got yeah um, a lot of windows at the back and even at the front we've got a wraparound window um, if you can see from the corner of the application um, so there'll be a lot of overlooking into neighbouring properties thank you thank you Jonathan do you want to comment on any of that could you unmute please <laughs> could I please yes mm. um, if we can just go back to the images um, again um if i can just go to the sorry the uh the photographs um of um uh, the site just um to be clear um 
the house which I've mentioned here, which is being extended, um, Councillor Bush is right, does face onto um, Coombe Lane. But I think my point was, just to get your orientation, the footpath in front of it, if you walk along that for about three or 400 yards, you get to the A3. So that it, it was simply a case of, it doesn't face the A3, it was just to give you the orientation of, of where the property um, uh, is. Um, there seems to be a little bit of misunderstanding. Th th this this um, property here, which um, has been um, uh, uh, extended, um, th that is uh, a property which is contemporary with um, uh, the rest of, uh, uh, of the, um, the Westcombe Avenue um, uh, conservation area, although again, um, not part of it. Um, and again, if we're, if we're looking at these um, images, um, again, I, I have to um, disagree with Councillor Bush on that. I, I don't believe this property has been there for 50 years, but um, it, it, irrespective of that, it's, it's not of a style similar to those um, of um, the, um, uh, the Crouch um, uh, houses that make up the rest of the estate. Um, just going back to the point about overlooking, um, whilst, or visual impact, whilst the proposals will bring this white rectangle and triangular roof shape a lot closer to the boundary, um, I think it's fair to say that you know what, what we have here is this is this is the building that, that it effectively provides the transition between uh, the two sites. Um, it's not as if we're looking at a, a building that's going to come hard up against perhaps an open um, back garden of this 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 property. There is an intervening building which the owners of this property um, enjoy. If I can t take you quickly to the computer generated images. Um, of uh, this uh, uh, this proposal. Um, again, I wasn't quite sure where there was a reference to a wraparound bay. Um, that was the only wraparound bay which I can see um, on the, the, the property, um, other than the splayed bay for the double height um, bay here. Um, that's an original or the the the, um, uh, the uh, uh, the glazing turn in the corner that's part of the uh, uh, dwelling as, ex as exists. And at the rear, and this was a point that I'd, um, you know, uh, that officers do acknowledge, if, if members have overriding concerns about um, uh, certain aspects of the glazing, which they feel uh, may uh, result in uh, a loss of uh, privacy, then there are opportunities to um, introduce um, restrictions on um, uh, glazing, um, but um, uh, again, uh, for, for something like this, um, we've already got a, a house with first floor windows which look back into um, the neighbour's um, garden. Um, so it, it's it's not as if we're introducing something which doesn't um, currently exist. It's just changing. Um, the degree, perhaps, to which somebody perceives um, that overlooking uh, to take um, uh, to take place. Thank you. Thank you. Questions. Uh, Council making. Right. Um, it's not clear from the diagram that I've got on page seventy-one how much footprint is taken up, how much of the garden is taken up by this new house, etc. And also, can you tell me what happens with the trees? So, Chair, um, looking at, um, I don't think on the presentation, um, if I could, if I could share the screen uh, again. Thank you. Uh, the so 
to run a small image that we've got um, uh, here, um, but that does show, um, you can see chair, councillor making members. This is the footprint of the existing building. And then this is the footprint um, of the proposed um, building. So it's, it's very much this corner here, which is being filled in um, by an extension. So if I move on to the, the larger scale, the block plan uh, above, we're really looking at filling in something in that space um, there. Um, but as I said, that, that, that's something which is coming closer to this existing um, outbuilding. And if we think this, this dwelling, currently the, the, the orientation, can you see where the, the arrow is moving? That's the way, that's the direction in which the windows are looking out of the back um, of this property. Um, so as I said, at the moment, the first floor windows here could look down into um, this garden um, in any event. So I, 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 I don't have an issue with that. In terms of the garden space, there's a very large frontage that would be retained in front of this bit, a building, a, a very generous um, uh, frontage, even allowing for the extension. And even though um, by perhaps some standards of other properties in the Wimbledon area, the garden is not overly um, large, it is still significantly in excess um, of the uh, minimum standards that we would normally adopt for family dwellings um, uh, under construction um, these days if they come forward as um, new dwellings. Thank you. Did you make reference to the trees? Sorry. Oh yes, sorry. Let me go back to the... Um... So we've got just go down to the photographs again. So the proposals don't um, don't show um, uh, well they, they 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 show trees either side of um, uh, the driveway um, entrance um, to um, uh, the property. Um, Again, if, if, if members feel that it's important, so we have just to the um, just to the left of where the driveway entrance is on page twenty on page seventy one, we have, I believe, probably this tree, and then on the other side we have this tree. If members are concerned that during construction those trees might be um, might be damaged, um, then uh, we could certainly put um, uh, conditions on um, requiring um, uh, protection um, measures. Um, I mean, they, 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 they do add to um, a, a rather unpleasant um, green aspect um, to the to the street. Um, so yes, I mean, certainly that we, we could attach um, appropriate conditions for that. But in the drawing, they don't exist. They're in different trees altogether. Oh, well, the, 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 those are the those are the trees which which I've seen on 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 site and which are shown on the um, uh, on the block plan. Um, I mean, I, I I visited the site and stood in the back garden, um, mm. and um, uh, there are trees beyond the site, and there are trees at the front of the uh, of the site. There aren't any trees on the boundary with the neighbours um, uh, outbuilding. Um, so, uh, as I've said, um, you know, if, if it's important to protect uh, the trees, we can attach a condition. But uh, as I said, I've, I've been on site and I've, I've, I've been into the, to the back garden to see for myself. OK. Um, any further questions, please? Councillor um, Henry. Right, thank you. Um, just want to find out, you've been on site, do you know what um, trees are they? To me, they look like oak tree, but um, do you know what trees are they, please? 
Um, Chair, the, um, uh, the, the photographs um, uh, show uh, a tree which um, uh, I think is a Leylandi um, to the right side um, of um, the, um, uh, the driveway entrance. Um, I don't know what the tree is to the left side. Um, the particularly large tree, which tends to dominate some of the images, um, some of the photographs that we've got um, of uh, the property, um, is in fact a street tree, and that's a London plain. But that's that's a street that's a street tree just outside the the application boundary. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Um, Councillor Southgate. Um. Yes. Thank you. Um. The report at Paragraph Seven Point Eleven says it is considered the proposal would not result in a detrimental impact to the character and appearance of the host building or surrounding area. Uh, can we infer from that that it, in your view, does not make a positive contribution to the surrounding area or, or the host building indeed? Um, Chair, um, uh, key tests um, here. Um, being adjacent to the conservation area, um, perhaps a test that might reasonably be applied is whether or not the proposals preserve um, or enhance um, uh, the area. Um, and we have said in that sentence that officers consider that the character and appearance of the adjacent conservation area um, would be um, uh, preserved. Um, I think it's always difficult when you're um, trying to perhaps give um, uh, a notional grade um, or score to the quality uh, of the design uh, of the building. The applicant um, um, it, it appears keen to promote um, what might be described as a, a, a makeover uh, to the existing um, uh, building. Um, but I, I think it, it's perhaps wrong to get drawn too much into matters of taste um, when it comes to um, uh, something like this. So I, I felt a, a, a fairly um, light touch uh, approach here in terms of our assessment of uh, the um, uh, design appearance. Um, really um, uh, indicates that this is very much a matter of judgment um, and um, officers are comfortable that the design um, is on the one hand uh, sufficiently sympathetic to the character or the prevailing character of the 1930s houses while at the same time and in accordance with the MPPF not being unduly prescriptive in terms of a rigorous or slavish requirement to replicate the materials of the 1930s dwellings. Uh, any further questions? Okay, Can, any comments? Councillor Southgate. Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't mind being drawn on matters of taste, I, particularly the CGI um, uh, image. It's just very disappointing, isn't it? We've got another, you know, overdeveloped um, house, but it's in, in particular, it's the landscaping, it's the hard landscaping, maximising the amount of off street parking, the neatly manicured little bushes. Um, it, why is it that every makeover we see like this tends to end up looking the same? You know, um, it it's just whether there's a a, a a marketing template that all developers follow and they're looking to to rent them out on the, to the uh, you know, the corporate corporate rental market. I don't know, but it's just uh, to my mind. Uh, not only is it not an improvement, but it, it is frankly, a lot worse than the Tudor Beast and Originals that we saw further down the road. I don't like it, but, you know, that doesn't amount to reasonable grounds for refusal, and I'm not going to propose a refusal. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Um, I'd like to move to the recommendations. We've had some comments here about materials. We've had comments here about trees. Um, so do we want to... Um, make any comment about trees in, in terms of recommendation? Council making. He's nodding his head, but I mean, what recommendation? I'm like, Leylandi, they just go all over the place and go nuts. Mm. And, I don't yeah. like Leylandi. I don't think I'll be bothered about like Leylandi. Like <laughs> Sorry. I don't particularly like Leylandi because it grows no. too quickly. But the, um, 
the view of the site as it stands at the moment with those two trees on either side looks a lot better than it would with those six um, ones that are there. So could we have a condition that they stay, even um, though one of them is in their land? I think, Chair, um, sorry. Yeah. Chair, um, I think that, that there are two things we can do here. If if members feel that the trees as existing uh, make a contribution or one or other of the trees mm -hmm. make a contribution, perhaps the one that, that, that isn't the Leylandi, um, and it was felt that um, the scheme should um, stand or fall um, on whether or not that could be protected and retained, then I'm sure we could um, uh, work around a, a, a suitable condition for protection measures. If members are concerned that on the basis of the computer generated images, um, they're rather concerned about what looks like a, a rather, some might say um, bland uh, landscaping uh, treatment, we could um, re require um, a, a landscaping um, uh, scheme. It's, it's, it's a little unusual for, little unusual for a land landscaping associated with um, just um, simple extensions to a, a, a property. Um, but I think if, if the applicant, um, I mean, so far the applicant has worked with us in terms of making tweaks and adjustments to the design. Um, and I think if, if, if he was proceeding on the basis that uh, the, uh, an approval had been granted, but the council wished to have better quality um, uh, uh, um, uh, landscaping, then, then I think he would be um, or I'd like to think he would be amenable um, to that. Okay, maybe that's that's what we need to be suggesting. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of materials, are we happy with the materials as, as demonstrated in the CGI or do we think we need to see the materials? Chair, yeah, um, um, the, con the condition um, actually says um, particulars and samples of the materials. Now, mm. uh, again, uh, this is perhaps um, um, my take on things, and, and maybe I'm being a bit prescriptive here, um, but I've noticed there's been a tendency with a lot of 1930s houses and living in the suburbs, you, you know, you can't escape things like this, um, that perhaps um, rough cast render is removed and it's replaced with um, uh, astonishingly, uh, astonishingly smooth render, which in itself can really quite change the character of the building. Okay. Um, as I've said, I don't, I don't feel that we should necessarily bully the applicant into following slavishly exactly what the other properties look like. But I do think it would be reasonable to say, we'd like to have a look at the samples of the, of the materials. We had it with Streatham Road, where the building, you may recall the building just south of the railway line um, there. They started off with some very sort of cutting edge, um, nice bronze framed windows. They came back to us and said, could they have gray? Well, bronze, gray, okay. But then it turned into UPVC gray windows. And we said, no, mm -hmm. sorry, this isn't satisfactory. So again, there's an opportunity here I think yeah. with uh, 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 this particular building um, to at least tease out better quality um, by attaching a reasonable condition. Okay, okay Councillor Ward. Uh, thank you. Um, I think I agree with the officer's um, recommendations on the materials and um, and working with the applicants on that. On the, the trees and shrubs and landscape and the front garden, I I think some members of the country may be overreaching ourselves a little bit um, in that. I don't think we are, we have and do, should have the power to dictate to people what kind of small shrubs and trees they have in their own private front gardens. None of them, are, none of them are, have a tree protection order against them. Anyone can put any shrubs or small trees they like in their front garden and it's up to them to do so. And we shouldn't be, we absolutely shouldn't be saying to people, you must keep this small tree because we quite like the look of it in a photo. It's their own private front garden. They can plant what they like. It's not our job to tell them that. And we should not put that condition on. Thank you. Well, that's your here, opinion, here. Councillor Ward. <laughs> Who said here, here? Simon Council. McGrath, I completely agree. Okay. Well, I, um, so the recommendation then is, um, do we agree the recommendation 
um, we clearly, from what's being said, want to do something about the uh, materials. So that would include the materials. Um, and now let's just take a, a, a on the tree front. Um, do we make any comment on the tree front? Can I just see a show of hands? We make a, co a comment on the tree. One uh, minute, front. chair. Can I, sorry, chair. Can I have something? I don't want to take any more comments, Councillor I, Henry. I, I just want to me? take a vote it's, on this. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Please, can we just show if you if you have concerns about the tree and you want a condition on on the tree? Can I just see a show of hands on that, please? So we've got three, and those who don't. <laughs> oh, okay, then we're not putting any conditions on, on with the tree. So the recommendation then is, um, as in the report, uh, along with the, the, the materials, we will um, see those materials in a, uh, before um, construction. I just want to find out what's the reason for the um, condition on the material. Is it because we're looking at safety? I mean, what, what, what the reason? I'm sorry, we did have it explained. Jonathan, would you like to re-explain, please? Uh, yes, the the, um, uh, the computer generated images um, show a, a, a very um, I don't know. Um, it, it it it's not the most refined of of, of um, CGI's that that I've seen. Um, we've had better ones for you know, for example, the scheme that we had on Blenheim um, uh, Road um, some months ago in Rains Park, um, and I'm just concerned that if the applicant wishes to um, conduct um, what I would describe as a, a makeover uh, for the building that so far as reasonably possible when applying our planning policies that we seek to deliver a good quality scheme nothing more nothing less but the condition is rooted in our adopted planning policies and I'm simply suggesting that here is an opportunity to at least see the material samples before signing them off. Thank you. So Thank you. can we agree that recommendations with those issues included? Can I, can I see those in favour, please? I think we're unanimous. We have two members who are not voting on this um, item. Thank you. So the recommendations agreed. Uh, we now move on to planning appeal decisions, which is an item to note. And uh, planning enforcement summary, there are no cases to report. Um, I think if anyone's got any concerns on planning enforcement, they can speak with the officers after uh, the meeting. Um, if uh, I think we've covered the entire agenda. Can I thank you uh, for your time this evening? And the meeting is now closed. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Good night. Good night.